Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 248 for the 29th of Tammuz in a leap year. Do you ever have the experience with somebody very close to you in your life where you feel so connected to them that there's almost like this like psychic bond between you two? You know them so well that you know when they're feeling uncomfortable, you know when they're really happy, you, uh, you can kind of just like really sense like you're so, so, so connected to them. How does this happen? How, what is this all about? Sometimes people feel this experience like with people that they've never met, but that's usually a little bit delusional because these are people that you never really met. But, uh, and often people end up getting disappointed, you know, like this idea of like love at first sight or whatever, where you, you meet somebody for the first time and you feel this instant connection with them. I mean, that's a discussion maybe for another time as to, is there something really there or not, or not with that? But this is more, I'm talking about something that's a little bit more substantial, a little bit more grounded. Maybe people in your family, maybe your spouse, maybe a very good friend of yours or something like that, that you really feel this very deep connection with so much that you just, you guys like really get each other. How does this happen? So it happens through time, right? It happens through time, getting to know each other, really learning more about one another, all of that. So if you think about it, really, where it comes from is the mind. It comes, these feelings of attachment, this connection that, that you have, these emotional connections really starts and begins in the mind. And that's what we're g- going to be talking about today. But in this case, instead of talking about another person, we're actually going to be talking about God. And we're going to be talking about how we can generate this feeling of connection and attachment to God. And in reference to everything we've been studying in Tanya, to give us some technical terms to this, this is what we refer to as chuba ila'a, the supernal form of chuba, the higher form of chuba. And this is actually going to answer a, a question that sort of uh, comes up if you've been paying attention, where previously in this Igarasa chuba, uh, specifically in chapter four, then it spoke about this idea of supernal chuba and how it relates to the first two letters of the yod ke ke, like the yod and the he, and about returning that second hay to its higher source but then in yesterday's episode if you uh, if you recall and go back and review if you need to uh we spoke about this higher level of chuba and it seemed to relate to the vav actually where we talked about this idea where we were returning the lower chuba was returning the lower hay back to its source and then we were able to ascend up to the vav like going kind of backwards and an upward motion through that yudhikei vavkei. So how do we reconcile these two things? So today we're going to learn about that, that if if you remember, like in that structure of the yudhikei vavkei, the yud and the he correspond to the intellect of God, and the vav corresponds to the emotions, and then that lower he corresponds to action. And so when, so there's a connection, so the, what's the connection between the vav and the two higher letters, the yod and the he, as we'll learn today, that there's actually a connection between the intellect and the emotions, and that the emotions are actually born of intellect. So just like we were talking about this idea of psychic connection, like having a psychic connection with somebody, um, when you know them like so well, that really actually relates to the mind. So it might feel like an emotional thing, like you feel this emotional connection with them, but it actually is very much connected with the mind. So that's similar with God, is that if we want to connect with God, if we want to feel this like really strong connection with God in a very intense 
deep way and if we want that actually to manifest in our actions as well and have that our actions be fueled with that emotional connection with god it actually starts in the mind it starts through meditation and contemplation and through learning torah and this is why if you uh if, if you remember from yesterday we started talking about this idea that what is tshuva ila what is, is supernal tshuva it's actually all about studying torah it's all about using the mind to study Torah. And today we're going to take that further and we're going to talk about how this study of Torah, the reason why it's so powerful and so essential to this aspect of, of a supernal tshuva is because it gives birth to emotions. So let's get into the text and see how the altar Rebbe breaks all of this down. And for context, we're going to be learning the entirety of chapter nine today of Yigir Tshuva. So here we go. So the altar Rebbe begins and he says that the uh, the explanation of the idea, as it is written in the Zohar and in the Tikkuni Zohar in many different places, that Bina, which is that intellectual contemplation and understanding, this is Shuvah Ila, this is supernal Shuvah. So what does this mean? And we see, and then the Altar Rebbe brings a quote that um, to to kind of uh, relate to this. This is from Devarim, chapter 22, verse 6, where it says, Ve'ha'em ovetzet ala efochim, which literally means the mouth, the mother crouching over the ch the chicks. So what is this? The mother is Bina. Bina is often referred to as mo as mother. And the chicks is the offspring of the of the mother, right? Of the of the bird. And so what are the offspring of Bina? The offspring of Bina is the love and fear of God. It's the emotions. So meaning to say, so what does this mean practically speaking? It means that through meditating upon the greatness of God with true like hamakasa das, it's called like through really deepening one's knowledge and thought, this will birth from the spirit of his Bina, the love and fear, intellectual love and fear that is based on rationality. So it's like we rationally think about, we use our mind and we use our reason to come to an understanding of God. And this will lead us to feel a feeling of love and fear of God. And this is uh, also, and then the Altar brings another citation for this here to support this, which is from, again, from Devarim chapter 30, verse 20, where it says, Lahava it's Hashem uh, So to love the Lord your God, why? because he's your life so meaning to say that it's it's like a very reasoned love of god it's that we're we're loving god for a reason we're loving god out of intellect and so meaning that we're not going to be content a person's not going to be content just with like a latent like the innate natural love that we all have because we spoke about this this is going back to the first part of tanya of safer shil so that was like in our first season of this podcast we talked all about that how there's different types of love and fear of god and that how a certain type of love and fear of god is innate it's something that we all have and we don't have to work for so while that's great you know it's really nice that we all have this like innate love of god but it's great. It, we want to develop that. We don't want to just be satisfied with that. So this is something that we, we can develop this innate love and fear that we have of God through our intellects, through really taking the time to meditate and contemplate and learn Torah and study God's wisdom. And this is true also in regards to fear of God. So it's like one side is the love of God and the other side is the side of fear or busha, like embarrassment or things like that. So this is the whole idea of ha'em So this is the meaning of the mother crouching over the, the chicks. That it's like the mother gives birth to her chicks, the mother, um, the mother bird. So it's like same thing that our intellect gives birth to these emotions. And now, okay, now the altar is going to get deeper into what do we mean by love when we talk about this idea of love, loving God. So love is really this idea of cl spirit cleaving to spirit. As it says, and this is from Shir Hashirim, chapter one, verse two, which is like this uh, kind of like a love song to God. It's a very uh, filled with a lot of romantic imagery, and uh, but it's all really a metaphor for our love of God. It says Yashkeni Mishikot Pihu Vagomer, which means He kisses me with the kisses of His mouth. So it's this idea of a kiss. There's something about a kiss that really think about it romantic movies you know they always show like how, how do people fall in love it's like they're kissing right and so what is this about 
is why a kiss? Why is a kiss so expressive of love? And so this is because, uh, so now to understand this, we can look at another quote. This is from Devarim, chapter 6, verse 5, where it says, L'chol nafshecha, with the entirety of your soul. So what, what do we mean with the entirety of your soul? So this is something we say actually in the Shema when we're talking about our love of God, that you should love God with all of your soul which is all the parts of our soul, meaning that it's the entirety of our soul, whether we're talking about the intellect of the soul or the mitos of the soul or their garments, the soul's garments, which is, again, something we spoke about at length in Sefer Shel Benonim, the machshava dibur and maise, like the, the thought, speech, and action, which are the, the garments of the soul, soul, to be able to cleave to God. Um, so what does this mean? So it's basically, so what Thought Sharp is basically telling us here is that, like, okay, so so far we got, there's, like, two aspects of love that we spoke about. We spoke about the idea of a kiss, that there's something about a kiss that is uh, expresses love. And then there's this idea of like our entire soul should love God. And what does it mean our entire soul? So our soul is made up of the mind, it's made up of emotions, and then it's also made up of the clothing, the emotion, the garments through which the emotions express themselves, whether it's through thought, that we're thinking about things that we're feeling, we're speaking about things that we're feeling, That's that would be the speech garments or we're doing things to express the love and so what does this mean so we want to so how do we bring these two things together the kiss as well as the entirety of the soul is that so a kiss again so it's like when we really think about the expression of love that's through a kiss there's like a connection it's like there's a, a cleaving the, the mouth touches the mouth right so if we want to have this kiss encompass the entirety of the person it means that our minds our emotions and our garments will be touching, will be cleaving to God in the same essential way. So meaning to say, what does this mean, practically speaking, is that, okay, so when we talk about the emotions, for example, so we see that there's something in the Talmud Yerushalmi in Pea, 1-1, one, one, where it says, Mahu rachum So just like God is merciful, so should you be merciful. So meaning that we should sort of like imitate God's emotion so that if we act, if we feel in the way that God feels, this is a way of connecting to God. It's like kind of like this synchronicity, you know? Um, you can think about this kind of like, again, like if I want to go back to like a human example and feeling very connected to somebody, that often what makes people feel really connected is if they have shared experiences. Let's say they go and on a roller coaster together and it's like this really heightened emotional state. That's going to make them feel very connected because they're experiencing a similar emotion. So, so too, when it comes to God, we want to try to mirror our emotions to God's emotions. And then also not only in terms of emotions, but also our minds, our intellect. So if we want to really like uh, occupy our minds with godly things so this is the idea of studying Torah right this is the idea of Torah because we know that Torah michochma uh, nafka this is from the Zohar the first part of the Zohar page 85a where it's like basically it's this uh, idea that the Torah comes from God's chokma and so not only is it about cleaving to God in like this just intellectual way for the sake sake of intellect and, and all of that, but now it's coming into our thought, like that we actually want to consciously think about God and think about God and, and, and cleave to God's thoughts and also to cleave to God's speech. Um, meaning to say, what is God's speech? God, this is halacha, says the Altar Rabbah. And this is according to, this is cited from the Gemara on, in Masechet Shabbos, page 138b, then that halacha is connected to the speech of God. And as is written, that it says, So this is another kind of proof for that idea that speech and halacha is connected. Where it's, This is from Yeshayahu chapter 51, verse 16, which means, And I have placed my word in your mouth. And then the altar goes on and he brings another citation a little bit further on in Yeshayahu, where it, and this is from Yeshayahu chapter 59 verse 12 where it says Udvrai asher samti b'ficha the words that I have placed in your mouth so there's this idea of like this Hashem placed these words in our mouth meaning that he like dictated to us you know and that's that's the idea of halacha right and then what about action so action is another way that we want to cleave to God that we want to mimic God imitate God and this is through giving staka this is uh, this is giving charity in order to vivify the spirit of the downfallen. As it says, so, and this is from Shmot, chapter 20, verse 11, where it says, um, that it took, uh, that meaning that God created the world in, ten, in six days, 
And so this is an, an, an and this is explained elsewhere says the ultra but the basic idea is this idea that like Hashem, his action was creating the world through six days. And this is like the idea of Hashem's chasid, Hashem's loving kindness is through creating the world. So how can we create a world? How can we do that? It's through giving stuff and through giving charity. And this is the idea of cleaving spirit to spirit. Like when we mirror all of these things, when we mirror our intellects to God, our emotions to God, our uh, thoughts to God, our speech to God, uh, our, and our actions with God, this is the idea. This is like the ultimate kiss. This is like really connecting to God on all levels with, with the utmost connection, utmost cleaving and unity, which comes from love. And now the ultra kind of shifts gears a little bit and he discusses the idea of sexual transgressions. So he begins and he first talks about the idea of wasteful seed. And then he says, and all the more so if we're talking about like incestuous relationships or other type of sexual unions that are forbidden according to Jewish law, whether biblically or rabbinically. And then in brackets, the ultra puts a little note here and he says that rabbinic prohibitions are actually worse. They're actually uh, more serious than Torah prohibitions. So just to keep that in mind, I guess. So the ultra says that all of these sexual transgressions, they actually cause a blemish in the mind. And so thus, in order to rectify these things, this involves Torah study. So this is because the effect of these things, the blemish that's caused by these things is in the mind. Torah study is a good rem remedy for this. And then as a proof for this, the Altar of cites Tanad Ve'eliyahu, and this is from Vaikara, Vaikara Rabba, the beginning of chapter 25. So where it says that if a person commits a sin and they are liable for death by the hands of heaven, what should they do in order to live? Like, let's say, God forbid, somebody does a transgression that's so severe that makes them liable for death by the hands of heaven, what should they do? So the remedy for this, according to the Tana de Eliyahu, is that if a person was accustomed to studying one page of, of, uh, of Torah, then they should study two pages. And if they're accustomed to studying one chapter, they should study two, et cetera, that kind of thing. So it's like they should like basically increase in their Torah study double. So why is this? So the Altar of says that this is like, we can understand this by way of analogy. If we think about a rope that got severed and then it was re-knotted, that the place that it was re-knotted needs to be knotted twofold or fourfold. And so too is it when it comes to the rope of God's heritage, Chebel Nachlato it's called. So remember we talked about this whole idea that the breath is like into a rope and our connection with God, the 613 commandments are like into a rope. So if that rope gets severed, which happens through doing one of these really severe sins that are liable for death by the hands of heaven, the way that we rectify this because the blemish is in the mind is to actually study Torah and to not only study Torah a little bit, but to doubly and fourfold study Torah. Just like if, again, if you had a physical rope, you wouldn't just like tie one little knot, you would tie it twice, three times. Like, you know, you want to make it really, really secure. And now the Altarpa is going to bring a citation from Mishle, and then he's going to bring an explanation of the citation from the Talmud Yerushalmi. So, okay, so basically, so the, the, the citation from Mishle, this is from 16, chapter 16, verse 6, where it says, which means through kindness and truth is sin forgiven or sin uh, atoned for. So, okay, so what does that mean? Through kindness and truth. So then we see that in the Jerusalem Talmud, in the Talmud of Shami, in Rosh Hashanah 3.8, it says, emet ela Torah There is no truth but Torah. So basically, if we go back to that, it says, with, with kindness and truth. What's truth? Truth is Torah. And that's how sin gets atoned. So again, it's the same idea that the way that a, a sin can be atoned for is through Torah study. So again, it goes back to Torah study. And... Then in conclusion to this, the Altar Rebbe brings a teaching from Masechet Rosh Hashanah uh, at the end of the first chapter of Masechet Rosh Hashanah, which talks, which which cites this uh, a pasuk from Shmuel Aleph, chapter three, verse fourteen, where it says, "Avon Beit Eli bezevach uvincha hu enom de enomit kapet." Meaning to say that forever, the uh, the Shmuel Aleph explains that forever the the sins of the house of Eli will not be atoned through sacrifices and offerings, the apostle goes on to explain. And so the, the Gemara explains that this is 
this is because they're not going to be atoned through uh, um, sacrifices and offerings, but instead the atonement will come through Torah and through good deeds. So meaning to say it's not, we can't buy ourselves off. We can't just like give God a bunch of presents and we're good to go. It's like we, ha we actually have to do the work. And what does the work involve? It means really studying Torah and doing good deeds, like giving charity and things like that. So that's the end of this section. That's the end of the portion for today. And so just in summary, the basic idea is that if we want to really cleave to God in this really profound and all-encompassing way, which the altar ref refers to as tshuva ila, the supernal form of tshuva, that starts in the mind. So it begins in the mind through Torah study. And then this intellect, this like intellectual development that, that a person can get through this Torah study and through meditating upon the Torah study and meditating upon God, this can lead to emotions and hopefully will lead to emotions that will mirror God and that will mirror God's emotions, which will also then lead to having a person's garments mirror God as well, in terms of their three garments, the machshava, dibur, and maisa, their thoughts will be about God, their, or, and will mimic kind of God's thoughts, again, through different thinking about Torah ideas, and their emotions will be like God, like their attributes, like just like God is merciful, a person will be merciful, as well as their actions, just like God is very, um, does charity with the world like creating the world was an act of charity was an act of chassad for god kindness so then this will motivate a person to act out of kindness and give charity as well and that this kind of mimicking of god mirroring of god is like an expression of like an ultimate kiss with god where it's this, this like a, with a kiss like a mouth to mouth kiss it's like you're literally exchanging breath so it's like there's really this very very deep connection with the other, which in this case is God. So that's it for today. And tomorrow we will move on to chapter uh, chapter 10 of Igor Sachuva, and I'll speak to you then. And subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow. And until then, have a great day.